stage two of the Dakar and a blessed relief for all concerned in Africa. Heit Kindergartner, happier than most. Johan Roma, topping the standings though, on the bikes. Andy Panic champion, Jean-Pierre Fontenay, leading after a fine day's drive. Well, it was so much a different story, wasn't it, yesterday? Yes, indeed, the mud of southern Spain, a downpour creating havoc. The stage had to be cancelled, and they ran the prologue once again, counting it this time in the overall standings. Well, for some, it was worse than others. Rui de Silva with the sidecar, having to dig it out with his damaged hand. And not a happy man. And indeed, he spared time for us. Literally stuck in the mud. Very unstable, he said, the conditions. Absolutely horrible. The wheels trapped on a ridge of mud. Well, it may be a bad thing. Taking part, even with our problems, though, is what it's all about. Yes, the principal is taking part. It's all very good. Sense. Well, a happy man, despite his problems, that's what we like to see. Well, others as well in serious trouble. Philip Gautier. Well, he had a desperate day, as you can see. And things were just getting worse and worse for him. Technical failures. The order of the day for him. At this early stage, though, everyone prepared least to have a chat about their problems whether their mood will change towards the end of the Dakar we shall see very tough today he says I don't like doing the circuit again we already did in the prologue and it's simply worse you have all kinds of problems water in the ignition the air filter is flooded the fuel line also flooded problems with the fuel pump and as you can see the smoke just filling up the cap Terrain, he said the land up the lie of it very bad indeed it's time to clean up and go on says uh, we'll see you in the special tomorrow <laughs> well you can see where he's going and indeed asking for directions as the smoke filled the cabin well thankfully soon we were on board the boat and heading to northern Africa After the repeat of the prologue, it was normal roads right the way down to the port. The vehicles cleaned up nicely to show off those sponsors' names, all important, of course, throughout the whole world of motor sports. Now the trucks joining the rest of them. The backup teams, all so important on the Dakar. And so farewell to mainland Europe, destination Africa. A chance for some to catch up with the pictures of the day, while others took it a little easier, it has to be said. There's Laurent Bourgnon on board the bigger boat that he's normally used to. And the Hummer as well, still in there and doing America proud, it has to be said. So a warm and rapturous welcome from the Moroccans. Cold, it certainly still was, the other side of the water. Only excitement getting the better <laughs> Some of the more effusive competitors. <laughs> It's cold indeed. Bernardo Villar says, not very good in sporting terms. The opening stage, very tough. Complex, he said, with all the water. Now the worst is still to come, I'm afraid. Very cold liaison. There's, uh, there's even more rain over here in Morocco. We're not expecting it to get any better. But unfortunately, he says, we haven't brought winter clothes. And it's still cold. 
As Jeff says, after the boat, very cold indeed, but thankfully it's over quickly and we're heading south. Moonrise over Morocco. And so this, what's in store for all and sundry. Heading from Rabat all the way down to Agadir with a 100 kilometer special sandwiched in the middle. Oh, where there are two wheels, there are also four, and indeed sometimes six or eight on the Dakar. Well, the cars, of course, in pursuit of the bikes. And that's something of a problem for some of the vehicles having to overtake those stragglers on the bikes. But for Jean-Pierre Fontenay, the defending champion, it was a chance to show everyone a cleat pair of exhaust pipes as he sped away in the Mitsubishi. And indeed, he was to complete the 99.5 kilometer special in a time of one hour, 13, 22. Throwing down the gauntlet, if you like, making his mark, saying, this is who I am, as if they didn't know already. But basically, making his mark for the rest of the rally. Well, of course, the Mitsubishi's filling the top four places today and Miguel Prieto one of those Prieto 13th last time around unlucky for some but he won the opening stage and said he was very happy to be top of the pile going on to the African continent Yes, Mitsubishi dominating again today, as expected, but they didn't have things all their own way, it has to be said. And the Nissans were playing catch-up, but in an effective form. That's Hiroshi Matsuoka in another Mitsubishi. Stretch design, able to carry his own parts, not that he doesn't use the backup service as well. Heute war es eine ganz kurze Etappe. So stand es auf well, dem Papier. Ulrich really Bremer, the team manager of Mitsubishi, in Bergen, said it was a great day for us. Very tough though for Prieto, he said. He had to overtake the slower bikes. But thankfully, he said there was no problems in general. And indeed, the extreme conditions didn't hamper us too much. It was quite a fast stage. And of course, it suited the Mitsubishis just fine. <coughs> Well, an unenviable job, it has to be said, for Ulrich Bremer, team manager of the team everyone expects the most of. So anything short of absolute success is deemed perhaps a bad day for Mitsubishi. Well, today they had a great day. As did the Schlesermobiles. Nice to see the buggies once again, these strange machines with the engine, of course, slung over the back. And Jose Maria Servia once again fastest of these machines and looking very comfortable it is as well very good he said well suspended moving fine throughout the special and not too many problems thankfully well Jutta Kleinschmidt said she had difficulty getting sponsorship as we've told you well, I shouldn't imagine she'll have too many problems next time around because she'll certainly be back along with her co-driver, Tina Thorner. They, she's had, they've done an awful lot of work together and it seems to be paying off. Kleinschmidt, sixth fastest today. And Thierry de la Verne on a Nissan. And indeed, he was the head of a group of four Nissans. Stefan Peter Hansel, a man, of course, who switched from the bikes. Greg de Mervieux and Salvador Servia as well. But by the day's end, it was Jean-Pierre Fontenay topping 
the list. Trouble for some, a better day for many. Alfieri, the Lavin. Very beautiful day. Very happy indeed with his performance. A great, great pleasure, he says. And so he might. Certainly looked to be enjoying himself. Thierry de Levin, seventh on the day. And seventh overall. Well, Stefan Peter Hansel, six times winner on two wheels. And showing, basically, that he's almost as good when it comes to four. Early days for Peter Hansel. Très, très impatient de, de découvrir la voiture en, en Afrique. Et en fait, Great euh, passion of his, he says. J'ai appris beaucoup de choses aujourd'hui. C'était la première fois que j'ai fait une patrouille dans des conditions de piste un peu dures, cailloux. Boum, well, the piste was in. The track was in. Sable. Et donc, quand Very on voit que c'est une piste de ravin à droite, la montagne à gauche, c'est vrai que. He was sliding all over the place, left and right. Quelques kilomètres. C'est venu progressivement, et en tout cas, je me suis beaucoup amusé. Well, very amusing, he says. <laughs> Well, some weren't smiling. But Peter Hansel, more than happy with his performance. Eighth overall, Peter Hansel. Eighth on the day as well. Well, it certainly wasn't all tough, and the liaison stages provided a chance for everyone to take their foot off the gas just a little bit. That little Serviet on the other this time, a happy man. And Jean-Louis Schlesser had a much better day, thankfully. He wasn't a happy man in the buggy yesterday. Wiper problems, he said. He couldn't see a damn thing. your eyes on this lot. So to tomorrow, what's described as the real start of the Dakar, not for the Feitan hearted. 510 kilometers in all from Agadir to Tantin in the south. But a particularly nasty special over 230 kilometers of stone track. It'll be fast for the best, hell for the rest.